Good morning, everybody. So remember back in November, when we first bought this boat, one of the first things we did was replace the old vinyl cover lifelines with these new uh, cable lifelines without the cover. Um, because there was all just, the vinyl was all cracked, it was super rusty at the connections, it was just time to be replaced. Definitely not safe for lifelines. But, now all of the places where the stanchions are like connected to the boat are cracking and water is getting into, that's not a good one, the one on that side. Now where the stanchion connects to the boat is cracking so water can get in and it's going to create rotted wood so we're going to replace them all. Cut them out, cut out the rotted wood and replace them with carbon stanchions. So if everything else with these lifelines and stanchions were perfect, we'd consider just rebedding the bases and you know just doing the fiberglass fill work and rebedding the bases and keeping everything as is. But cautionary tale about these lifelines. So when I replaced them, I wanted to do all the work myself and I shopped around and I got the stainless steel cable, 316. I got all the fittings. and turnbuckles and everything like that. And I was just shopping around, it was a pain. I even got a hand, a big hand crimp, um, or like a hand swage tool, and it turned out the fittings I got needed to be machine swage, they couldn't be hand swage. So I ended up bringing them to Max Sales down in Stewart, and they put them together for me. Now, when I left Max Sales, they cautioned me that this cable might not be 316s. They were used to dealing with a lot of cable all the time and Colin over there said it's got like kind of a slightly blue tinge just a sign that it may be like a lesser quality stainless steel. So 316s like of the highest quality pretty much. Um, I think everything on a boat should really be 316 stainless versus um, like 304 or uh, lesser quality. So he suggested just keep an eye out and I was like well, if it is 304, what would happen, you know, to the lifelines? And he said, well, they would just start rusting after a few months instead of a few years. Um, and sure enough, it's only maybe eight months later, but after only about four months, we started seeing some rust coming out from the fittings. So this one, super rusty. Just where salt water is sitting has been already rusting out the cable. Now I'm sure this cable will be safe for another few months. It's probably fine just for another few months, but after that, it's it's sacrificed. It's gonna, you know, it's sacrificed. So while we're rebedding all the bases, we're just gonna do all the lifelines over again. We're actually gonna do them in Dyneema this time. Much lighter, we can do it all ourselves. It'll give us a, a chance to practice splices and the lashings. And yeah, we can experiment doing the stanchions out of carbon fiber like Sierra said. So, we'll show you our technique of how we're gonna do that. We actually got this idea from Mike over in Pennsylvania, the guy who we visited while he was working on his Crowther catamaran. So we're kind of borrowing the idea from him. All right, so the first thing we have to do is take the old lifelines off and Sierra's gonna do that and then we're gonna start just taking all the bases off um, one of us is gonna be down below holding the bolts and the other one's gonna be unscrewing it from the top or maybe vice versa So we already got the other side off. Boat's already looking pretty naked. I'm just taking all the random hardware off. Sierra's working on the lifelines. While we're doing this, we're gonna do some other things that need to be rebedded by the lifeline. So we're gonna rebed all the cleats. We're gonna do some pad eyes. We're actually gonna take the stainless pad eyes out and we're gonna make them Dyneema pad eyes coming through the deck. Just gonna relocate some cleats and take away one set and a few other things like that. Just random things while we're at it, while we're filling stuff with epoxy and grinding and sanding and painting. Just get it all done in the same area. All right, lifelines are all off. Time to take the stanchions off. 
I'm gonna go down below, unratchet the nuts, and Sierra's gonna stay up here and hold the screwdriver. See if we get all this hardware off pretty easily. Hopefully, it goes smooth. Every time we do this, something gets stripped. <laughs> That's right, we got a cutting wheel. So we're gonna start from back to front. So I gotta get all the way back there. Hot, sweaty, back in the cave back there. Here we go. All right, we're way in the back of the boat where the steering is and uh, the exhaust. Here's the first one way back here. And then we're gonna do that guy and that guy, that guy. All right, here we go. This one, do you see it moving? Definitely getting hot back here, but so far, so good. Now, some of these backing plates are like a hardwood. Some of these backing plates, oh, for you guys who don't know what a backing plate, this is a backing plate. Can you see it? So, the stanchions are on top of the deck, and then they're bolted through, and this backing plate keeps the bolts from pulling through the deck or, or compressing the deck in one little space. It kind of spreads out the load. So you can use aluminum, you can use stainless steel, you can use hardwood, um, but what we're going to replace all the backing plates with, or all the backing plates that we are replacing, um, is with G10, which is this pressure laminated epoxy. Uh, so it's like quarter inch G10, uh, super strong, not made of any sort of metal, not wood, so it can never rot, it can never corrode. So we don't really ever have to worry about the actual backing plate ever again, and it'll never get, it'll never compress. Um, so the integrity will be there pretty much forever. Any bolts that go through it, that's something you may have to worry about in the future if you don't bed them well or just as time goes on. But uh, we're gonna try to do a lot of stuff like that, replace conventional ways of doing things with more composite, permanent, modern ways of doing things. See how it goes. So far when we put, um, this is G10 right here. I gotta cut those bolts down. But this is the backing plate for that big solar stanchion that we did. And so far we're real happy with G10. It was nice, uh, I don't know, it was nice working with it. So we're gonna keep using it. All right, we're done for now in this back corner. Let me show you what some of this looks like. Here's a piece of hardwood. That's definitely rotting a little bit because it was leaking. See that? Here's a piece of aluminum that is definitely corroding a little bit because it was leaking. Here's a piece of, I believe, aluminum. Yeah, definitely aluminum, but it's not corroding because that one wasn't leaking. Maybe a tiny bit by one of these bolt holes right here. Not bad. And here's a piece of, I believe, polished aluminum, I think. Same thing, no corrosion on that one because that wasn't leaking. Super light. Yep, we'll replace all those with G10. All right, moving forward a little bit, we have a piece of, so this is actually a piece of what looks like starboard for a backing plate for a cleat that's right out there. And you can see even starboard, uh, it's, it's a little too soft, it indents. Little too soft. And then here's another uh, hardwood backing plate you can see completely leaking through it. I mean, like, it got wet, it's leaking. So yeah, replacing those. Thank you to our friends Brian and Carol who gave us this tool. <laughs> it, it's awesome. This, I love it. This tool's been amazing. I've never had that tool before. Bill always tries to make me use a standard screwdriver. Never gives me the right tools. But this thing right I've been in so many tight situations where I could not get a regular screwdri screwdriver in there and that thing has been so helpful. So thank you Brian and Carol. Hi. How you doing today? Would you like to grab a screwdriver? Okay.
Okay, it's 5.30. We've been working since about 10 o'clock. It's super hot out. We're on our very last cleat and stanchion, and then it's time to epoxy the holes, and Billy is being a contortionist. We have all the deck hardware off finally, or at least the ones along the rails of the boat. We're gonna drill out all the holes that the bolts were through, just kind of clean them up, make sure we get any rotting wood or, which there wasn't much of, just some little wet spots here and there. So we're just gonna drill out the holes and make a nice clean surface for the epoxy filler to bond to. Does it look like I'm hitting you in the head? Sierra's gonna vacuum up the holes and then we're gonna tape the bottom. What's going on you guys? Boat is a disaster right now. This is the next day. Last night I pretty much just uh, drilled out all the holes and then filled them with a very thickened epoxy with a cavasil, really strong thickening agent so you could see that like here did kind of a rough job filling the holes we taped the bottom so it wouldn't fall through so right now Sierra is sanding those surfaces smooth we're gonna try to get paint off the surface of all that and I'm actually gonna drill some bigger holes out for where we're gonna mount the stubs of the stanchion so we got this solid fiberglass tube, uh, maybe one inch diameter. So we're actually going to drill out like an inch and a half into the deck, an inch and a half hole into the deck, and then we're gonna fill that with cav thickened epoxy, cavasil, um, tape the bottom, fill that, and then we're gonna drill that out, and then we're gonna insert this fiberglass rod with some thickened epoxy around it, so then it'll be bedded in deck and we'll actually put a little collar around the top of that on, on the deck. So you'll kind of see as we get going. The deck is on the edge there, that's crazy. The most impressive thing about this boat so far is the quality of, of marine plywood they used when they built it. Like, there has been a, a few spots that definitely had some water intrusion, but if it was the original wood, it, it just, it didn't spread and it didn't really rot. It might have rotted in a little tiny space. I think I said that before when I was working on that front deck up there like back in November. But they used some sort of really high quality wood to build this boat. Very impressive. So we're going to fill this whole empty space with Cavasil. We have all the holes drilled out again and taped off from the bottom and now we're just filling them with some more thickened epoxy and cavasil. Leaving it pretty liquidy consistency in relation. Thicker than just straight epoxy itself but definitely not like a peanut butter paste or maybe like a ketchup paste. So hopefully it'll sag down and fill all the voids in the corners and everything like that. And we'll leave it a little high and, and sand it down later.
All right, thunderstorms out here, so we left the boat. Uh, lucky enough to be close enough to my dad's place to be able to use his garage and some of his tools. So we have some G10 for backing plate material and I just measured out some of the backing plates so we're just gonna cut them up. And we're also gonna use this as like a collar for the fiberglass rod that's gonna be epoxy through the deck. I'll probably stick out between four and six inches above the deck, probably like six inches above the deck. And then the epoxy tube will slide over that and that's what the lifelines are gonna go through. We're gonna use this G10. Here's another sheet of G10 for some other backing plates, but we're gonna use this G10 for uh, for those collars. We're gonna cut a hole in them and they're just gonna sit on deck and the rod's gonna sit through that as well. You'll see. Getting there. I'm making some of these diamond loops for our soft pad eyes that are going to come through the deck. Shaking but not stirred Just a lesson that I've learned And so it goes Tables turn In your own Right now we just glassed in those solid fiberglass rods into the deck of the boat Now what we're gonna do is take our carbon fiber stanchions and drill some holes through them for lifelines. Generally, most boats only have like two lifelines, like one on the top, one in the middle. We're gonna put three evenly spaced lifelines. I think we'll be able to do away with that white net because Jetty's not a tiny dog. She's like a mid-sized dog. And I think that third lower lifeline is gonna be right at her chest level. So I think that'll be, be good safety measures for keeping Jetty from falling off the boat. So we're gonna do three lifelines in here. So we're just gonna drill these holes and then we're gonna prep them for some paint.
So we got, we finally got these things all painted up. We got two coats of primer on, two coats of top coat, all grip. It came out really, really nice, I think. So now we're gonna throw on these suckers. The caps that I got from a website called Cap Plugs. And they fit perfectly in the top of the stanchions. Just like that, easy. So those are the caps, and then we got these little grommets from, I think, McMaster. Oh, excuse my dirty fingernails, been boat work for a couple weeks. These are for the holes, and we'll just put them in there, and then that way they'll prevent chafing on the Dyneema line that's going to run through them. So the guy, Mike, who we kind of got this idea from, he epoxied a slip, slippery polyester tube, I think he said, into the middle. So it was actually like a tube that ran through the to both sides of the hole. And then he just smoothed it out really good so that the Dyneema wouldn't chafe. Um, this is, I think, just a little bit easier. Now his way is waterproof, and this potentially is not, like water could drip through the Dyneema into the inside of the tube and then come down, but it's gonna be so loose. It's snug on the fiberglass rod that sticks up, but it's not watertight. So I think that any water that does get in there, it will just kind of run out the bottom. So yeah, that's what we're going with.